got the zoom. You got the, oh, I got the zoom. Right. Going right in, right in. No, no, no. I'm looking at your nostrils. Flare those suckers. Okay. That, take, take this. All right. There he is. There he is. He's remembering Pearl Harbor. Let us close the coffin. On the bolt, he's got it. It's been the guy in the red, in the red shirt. The red shirt. Right. We'll, we'll take a picture of the red shirt harbor soon. So, now, a lot of people think that Barbie is not really alive. But there she is, sort of. I don't know if you can see her. It's really hard. She's elusive. But we brought her along. Later on, we will actually show we'll you the real Barbie. I'm going to do a slow pan. This is uh, some sort of beach. Swamp's version of a black sands beach. But it's really kind of a pretty place. You stop because I like the way that rock right there looked. Okay. doing his finger is dancing. Oh, the, the plant's closed up. Kids, don't try this at home. That's Commodore's foot. their bungee jumping platform featured prominently in the tourist film on the airplane. Below that's a river for a jungle cruise, but I probably won't go on that because we're going to the real jungle of Rota later this week. Okay, Commodore, talk to me. What is this place? do a lot with farming and uh, agricultural areas. Probably one of the number one poached areas that uh, Guam has only because it's got uh, wide open terrain, easy to see the game. The last of the Carabao herd, numbering about 250, are located in, the, in these hill areas right out in here. A lot of freshwater areas down below. Uh, there's a small freshwater reservoir further out within the hill areas up in there. Matter of fact, it's the largest freshwater lake on Covers several hundred acres. A lot of big peacock bass in them. Get up to about 10 to 15 pounds. Very nice area. Completely different than the northern part of the area. Just well, what are they poaching besides the the carbow buffalo? Deer. The deer are sandbar deer. They're an imported deer. Uh, they get probably 100 pounds on the hoof. Uh, they're a, a delicacy out here. Outside of that, there's a lot of wild pigs that roam the area, stay down in the lower areas where they have um, a lot of your freshwater springs and mud holes. Is that a vehicle way back over there, Robert? What? Is that a vehicle way over there? On a hill ridge, on the ridge right over there? You know, I got my, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, that's part of the agricultural area of Pulau. It's a lot of uh, local Chamorro families own property well within there. There's no power or uh, uh, fresh water other than what they can get from their own resource there. They bring in generators and etc. But it's mainly a farming and uh, farming area down in the valley. Well, this is certainly a different part of Guam. I imagine this, except for the sword grass and the palm trees and nut trees, could be Oakland. This could be California. The very rare and endangered Barbara Bay. Yeah, yeah. This she never 
steps out, elusive, shy, always wary. She could not imagine a snake being there. No, the problem is she does imagine the snake. <laughs> she has 400 pounds of jello in the back. Don't ask what she uses to wet the jello down with. We have the elusive white tatamona. There he is. He's got his nose in the grass. Heaven knows what he's doing. Maybe he's looking for a morsel of food. Maybe not. Let's see if we can see a face. Oh my God! It's there. He is. My God, there he is. You gotta Back do away. Your white contrast balance. Well, it's all white right now. That's the problem. I'm not sure whether anything will show. There we go. There we go. The white against the blue sky. It should show. It should show. Oh, I. Uh... Here he is, hiking out across the vast wilderness, looking for what we don't know. This is the uh, old Chamorro village that they've tried to remake. Uh, they have cultural shows here once in a while. Supposed to, they started off as a large tourist attraction, but didn't draw a lot of people, so kind of fell through. And there's Flash. He got out before I got a chance to see him. We're actually in the village of Inarahan, one of the local villages on the southern end of the island. Southernmost tip of the island. Big old resort. Cocos Island. And back to left of the old Spanish mission. Yamatic Bay. This is the alleged site of where Magellan, who discovered Guam, landed. Reportedly, he landed uh, right off in the middle of the bay here, and they took a boat in and met with the villagers here. It's one of the older villages on the island. This is primarily at the uh, almost to the southern, very farthest side of Guam. Um, this is the last major bay area that they could have uh, moved into. That's also the site of an old Spanish. Fort that was here after Magellan landed, they established a fort and headquarters up in here, and it's up here on the hill that we're standing on, which is uh, to Robbie's left. Off in this direction over here, uh, if you look down, you'll see an old remembrance of another fort that's still part of Soledad here. But on the other side of that, there's a marsh area there, kind of a wetlands area, just offshore about. Or so is a Japanese Zero that crashed during the liberation was shot down. Today the US Navy SEAL teams when they come out here to initiate them into uh, the Guam Navy SEALs team they get dressed in their dress blues or dress, dress whites they dive down into the uh, Zero they sit in it get their picture taken. We just got our big first load of Japanese tourists. Mm. They're everywhere. Okay, this is the fort that I'm that's looking at now. Fort. That's where Barbie's at. Got the fort out there, and that's the last one. Oh my goodness, this is rare indeed. She's out. She's out and about. That's because she can see all around her no snakes. You get snakes. all kinds of people going to 
It's very windy and that's why these pictures are so bumpy. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. There he is again, covered from head to toe, meeting two white ones. There they are. My God, how must be no snakes around. We know that. Tanned as she is. There it is. Wait, hold on. Let me get up there. There it is, white and white. White and brown, actually. There is a difference in color. Can you pick out which one is Robert? Which one with the camera? Is it this one? Is it this one? Ah, there he is. The wind is probably blowing up here at about, oh, maybe 20 miles an hour. That's why we're getting a lot of this gusty wind sounds. My God, he's trapped. Should I go rescue him? Will he escape? He's being surrounded. No, there he is. He's breaking free. Nope, that's not him. Where's the hat? Ah, there he is. He's making a flanking action. He's moving out. They're not recognizing him. Here he comes. He's from the Foreign Legion. No, he's not from the Foreign Legion. There he is. He's going to inconspicuously move around them. They'll think he's another tourist with a hat. He is a tourist with a hat. There he is. He's coming. Those are his kids. My God, he started school all over again. Okay, what we are now looking at is the Agate Bay. Father Bolton, this is for you. Somewhere along in here, if we dig deep enough, we might even be able to find remnants of the old shells that you took, or that you used when you bombarded this bay. and the red shirt came out. Could have been here. In the jungle. Maybe he's still here. I think his ass is fertilizing most of those. Now is there. that the, the naval installation on the other side of on the On the island? other side of that is Apra Heights, or Apra Harbor, which is the main naval installation right now. That's where the fleet would have come into and docked to unload supplies that would have uh, taking care of the marine divisions that came in and landed. What you're seeing in the background, way over here, that is the plume from the power plant. That's a PD power plant. That's right on the other side of uh, Apra Harbor. This area is also well known because it has a lot of turtles in it. Uh, they come in here for feeding purposes. Uh, they usually nest on the other side of the island, but this area is real heavy. that the uh, turtles like to eat. Little bugs and whatever else that is that they eat. Yes, somewhere in that bar, this bar. One of those must be rolled up, the door is locked. We are in high grass, which means one may not see on the ground. There might be snakes. Robbie's back. focusing on a plaque from the War in the Pacific National Historical Park. Uh, and this is set aside at Agate Bay. I'll focus in on here. You'll notice that Wing was here. So I imagine the invasion was up this way. In fact, that must be landing craft, huh? That's what and that back is. Back up here. Yeah, it appears to be landing craft. And this is where, what, Japanese this gun was emplacements the were? Japanese gun emplacements. These are some of the caves 
We'll take a closer look at the caves. We'll go up there, but what about that? Is that a Japanese gun facing out Pacific? Yep, this is a Japanese field piece. This was actually here, still in place during the uh, the liberation. This might have been one of the guns that fired on Father Bolton. We'll go up and take a closer look at it. We're now at Agate Bay. Fifty years ago, this July, was the invasion. Japanese Akak. -ak. Commodore doesn't think it was here originally. Since they brought it in for the war. Memorial. The whole hill opened up into a bunker, concreted from the inside. Father Bolton take a picture in. Back at bay, Father Bolton. This is what the invasion force would look at it, looking back to where the vessels all were from the beach side. Speaking of invasion, let's see how close. Invasion I'm beach. right on the edge of the beach, and there is a machine gun nest. And there's that bunker that we took pictures of a little earlier. And over there, where the Akak -ak and the Howitzer were. So, if we retake the island. By the way, this is like a major tourist spot for Japanese ones that can't afford Hawaii. I wonder what they think of when they see where their grandparents and fathers fought us. They probably think, well, that American man is taking pictures with a Hitachi camera and a Nikon, driving a Subaru, we won. What, Commodore? Heavy field, heavy field piece. The size of the uh, the bunker, the girth of the cement, but the rear end of it is so open that it uh, was used to bring in ammunition in a large gun. You go to the back, you can see it's how open. Should be looking directly out of that uh, gun emplacement right there. This would be for an artillery piece of some sort. <clears throat> Probably similar to the one that we saw out in the front there. But you wouldn't find this girth. This has uh, got to be 18 inches thick cement. Take the uh, concussion of the rounds going off. No wonder some of those guys stayed in the jungle for 30 years. They were deaf. They couldn't hear. <laughs> Surrender. Retreat. We quit. Something written in Japanese on the outside of this pillbox. If you look on the inside, you can see that it took a direct hit on one of our pieces. The rebar's been added to it just to shore it up. It's yeah. all new stuff. But... What you're looking at is part of the area called Retidian. And we're focusing in at uh, part of the refuge area. And 
these particular slots where the water is coming in, you see dark blue. Those are the cuts in the coral where the turtles come in to breeding. This is probably one of the most pristine beaches on all of the island. It's now part of the United States Fish and Wildlife Service, and uh, it's been being con converted into a refuge for education purposes so that the uh, local people and the military people can see what old Guam used to look like. That channel there. Yep. That's a breeding area. That's a nest uh, for sharks right in that area, too. So who's parked down there? Is that, uh... That's part of the refuge people. That's uh, the refuge headquarters that we're looking down at right now. Part of the old administration building. Uh, it's all been unclassified, but uh, previously they had uh, a communications lines and a sensor device that extended out into the ocean and they monitored for nuclear submarines. But this is part of the beach area now. At, uh, the refuge will cover approximately 350 acres of property and it extends all the way down past where we're looking now out to the very edge of that big tall mountain over there. Uh, I'll get out there now that you can see it. See the end of the refuge right there. You can see it, but uh, we're focusing north, northwest. We're looking into the Philippine Sea and right out here is where Japan is. I don't know if you can see it in this uh, video screen, I'll try and zoom in on it. Oh, I think we're still probably a thousand miles short. But it's out there somewhere. Father Bolton, you would have sailed from scanning over real quickly again. You would have steamed from way past this area here. That would have been south. You would have come up through here. Would have been steaming north, northwest. Probably north, north north, north, northwest, out, straight out ahead. The island of Rhoda is right here. Directly north of Rhoda is also a Tinian. Um, that's the home of where they stored the atom bombs and where the Enolia Gate took off when it uh, hit Japan. And then north of that is Saipan. Um, you would have used these straits right in through here. These are called the Rhoda Straits. They're a real deep channel, heads up towards the Marianas Trench. A road is approximately in this direction right here. And directly north of that then is uh, Tinian and then Saipan. Can you ever see Rhoda? Yeah, we can, we can barely, well, you can't see it in this picture here but uh, because of the cloud structure, but on a clear day, you can see the island of Rhoda. We'll be in Rhoda tomorrow. Um, one of the largest blue marlins ever caught was caught in this channel right here. It was 1,600 pounds brought up a point here. This this a ball field was cleared uh, because the Navy used it for recreational purposes and it was basically closed for all of the Chamorros and other island people uh, until just recently when the Navy abandoned it and then turned it over to Fish and Wildlife Service. The area that I'm focusing in on right now, this big clump of coconut trees, is part of an old copra plantation that uh, was planted during the, or prior to the war and the Japanese used it quite a bit extensively and drew their copra products out of here. Ready. Here we are, going through deepest, darkest Guam. And we have no idea if we're photographing anything but the windshield. Can you hear the jungle parting reluctantly as we thrust our way into the virgin, dense thicket? Locked or not. I will turn this off and see if it's locked. Okay. More what may prove to be nothing but blurry pictures, which I may end up editing out when I get home. Now, when I'm finished editing and everything, I'll make a copy of this. Oh, yeah. Right. For you. I'll send it back for to you. all the others. For you. For you. Yes. Hi, I'm Marlon Perkins. Big Jim is next to me, driving the Mammoth Land Rover. Now, well, Big Jim wasn't named Big Jim because he's tall. <laughs> and you know anybody with a voice like this named Marlon? <laughs> well, never mind.
suffice it to say I never get tired of seeing Big Jim wrestling those big anacondas. <laughs> right, Big Jim? That's right. <laughs> All right. Ooh, a pounding surf. A building. A tree. All of this wiggling is very much ancient chamorros left all that trash. Ancient there. chamorros, yes. Who discovered aluminum and Budweiser even before the Germans did. Are we gonna stop here? Nope. No, no, okay. No. And I'm going to turn this off. By the way, I hope everybody's bouncing on the couch at home. That's how you can truly appreciate this ride. We just spent about an hour out here collecting seashells by the seashore. This reef makes for some dandy seashell collecting. You probably got a tremendous sunburn, but I got a lot of nice coral. This is a pristine beach. No one, no tourists are allowed on it. And we saw lots of neat things. Tidal pools with baby eels in it, and neon fish, and zebra fish. Ancient Hawaiian method of harvesting coconuts. Because ancient Hawaiians, being ancient, couldn't climb the trees. Working. Well, those suckers are. Even when you get it off, it's going to fall into that garbage down below. Yeah. Well, actually, we can get that. Right. 